Here's a peek at life around Fringe. My name's Rob, and the show is called Fruitcake, Ten Commandments from the Psych Ward, which is a fairly self-explanatory title. Uh, the whole show is a night shift on an acute psychiatric ward. The central character is a fairly jaded nurse who hears the voice of God, who, for the purposes of the show, is an elderly Rastafarian lady, and she gives him ten benevolent commandments to help him through the shifts and life. We are with Crush Improv and their Fringe Show Spotlight On. We are with the cast, Kari, Al, and Bradley. Why don't you guys tell us a bit about your show? Uh, well, the show has a different guest every day, and that guest uh, will tell some uh, true life stories, some real anecdotes, and then we uh, kind of deconstruct them and, and uh, turn those into magical improv scenes until we run out of gas, and then we throw back to the guest who tells another story. All right, we are here with HR from the show Melting with Mad Melting in Madras. Sorry, Madras. Melting in Madras. Why don't you tell us a bit about your show? Okay, um, when I was 23, I got out of college and I saved up all my money and I went to India um, to study yoga and I wanted to study music as well. And my intention was kind of like to become at least a semi-enlightened being. And what happened was that instead of becoming semi-enlightened, I became very ill. And it's a comedy. I mix in some of my um, Indian singing lessons and I, I kind of take you to my yoga lessons and my singing lessons and then sort of my journey into my little bout of illness and um, I play a number of different characters and, and I play Indian inflected melodies on my guitar. I'm from Leicester in the UK. I was a psychiatric nurse for 16 years, counted my training and I now do comedy and slam poetry full time. What and uh, the fun thing about seeing an improv show is that it is completely made up in front of you so I don't, I don't know, I like watching improv because it's, I feel more tuned into what's happening and like I'm kind of following along at the same pace as the people who are playing on stage and every time a connection is made it's like, oh, oh yeah, of course, I was, I was going there, I wasn't going there, that was cool. I think there's something too about um, fringe audiences tend to be a communal audience and there is something with an improv show because we are responding to the feedback of the audience as much as we're responding to each other that you may not be shouting out suggestions like you would in a Whose Line Is It Anyway style show, but still you are a part of where the show is going to go. It's a shared experience. Basically, like Kari was saying, we're all figuring out what's going on together. Anybody who's ever wanted to go to South Asia, or who has been to South Asia, or who loves music, or likes yoga, or likes a good travelogue, or likes some good um, character work, or who just likes to laugh, and have a little bit of reflection in the laughter, then they'll enjoy my show. We yes. did a Bring Your Own Venue a couple years ago, uh, a show cleverly titled Best in Venue, because it was the only show uh, in that venue. Um, but uh, we're very excited uh, and um, uh, super happy to have made the lottery and, and be in a proper fringe venue this time here in Studio Leonard Bohm. Um, yeah, I've done a few fringes around the... Uh, I've, I've done Vancouver and I actually did Ottawa in 1997. I'm very old. But yeah, mo for the most part, my job at the Fringe is hosting the beer tent. So this is the first time in a long time that I've actually been in a show. It's been pretty great. Uh, well, it was really the fact that you, you'd never get the psychiatric nurse's point of view articulated. A lot of people have got opinions on mental health, and a lot of people don't know a great deal about it as a subject, but there's a lot of interest. And as a profession, we're the only profession who sees patients 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it's very rarely you get to hear the nurse's perspective on mental health and the whole quagmire of mental health articulated. Plus, I thought the subject of men mental health was potentially funny. Firstly, just meeting uh, all of these guests that we've had, uh, with the exception of uh, Emily Perlman, uh, I had never met before, so um, literally about 15 minutes before the show starts, uh, there are times when we're meeting this guest that's going to be basically driving the whole show and, and, and kind of setting the pace for the evening. And uh, it's, it's a real adrenaline rush. Um, just I would have to say, too, one of the highlights for the shows for me was the first night we had Alan Gerard on. We threw to him to tell a story, <laughs> and he was laughing too hard to tell a story and had to take a break for a little while before he could move on to the next. That's about the best compliment was, another artist can give That felt pretty good. My name is Tim Anderson and I'm from the cast of Complex Numbers. And our show is about um, exploring a different kind of relationship. Uh, it is about um, uh, Fiona, a mathematician, who solves complex problems as a job, but uh, has a, a little bit more of an issue solving um, relationship issues. So it's a, an hour-long walk through her trying to figure stuff out for herself. <laughs> There you have it, it's HR 
who I'm calling Hugh Robert, even though he won't confirm nor deny. Neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> As an improviser, it's fun to just have like an actual theater space to play in that's not yeah. a bar that has no television somewhere else or just people coming in and out. We're someone, not fighting. So we're trying to sell you DVDs out of his backpack. <laughs> uh, it's really nice to have like an, a tech person and lights and a nice space and a. You know, it's 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 very nice. Yep, yeah. and uh, and the the great audiences also definitely help. And uh, feels awesome. great. Uh, my character is Dan. Uh, he is the co-worker of Fiona. He's a mathematician and computer programmer as well. And um, the uh, the way I got into character, um, I found a lot of similarities with myself and with Dan. Um, except for the math part, I don't know anything about math or complex equations or anything like that. Um, so it took a lot of, of walking through with Nadine, because Nadine's husband is a mathematician, um, and that's where a lot of the, the jargon comes from that uh, I pretend to understand when I'm on stage. Uh, uh, Crush Improv, uh, which you can find on the web at www.crushimprov.com or uh, at crush underscore improv on Twitter. We have a show the first Monday of every month at the Elmdale Tavern. Uh, it is a three-on-three -three competitive show where we have different improvisers in each time. The audience gets to rate who they like best, and uh, the teams are actually playing for the most valuable prize an improviser can play for, more stage time. So uh, if a team doesn't do very well, you don't have to see them that much anymore. That show is called Bout Time at the Elmdale Tavern, first Monday of every month. We're also in the Summer Fling Festival at Arts Court. Uh, all that you can find online at crushimprov.com. And look up my summer crush with the uh, with the summer fling festival. Oh yeah, that's what that's called. And Kari's doing a show. Well, none none of those awesome things uh, I will get to participate in this summer because I'm in a touring Shakespeare show, and by touring I mean around the city, uh, <laughs> touring this city, uh, in different parks outside every night. Uh, we're doing Antony and Cleopatra. Should be pretty fun, but this should also be pretty fun. So. That's with the company of Fools, so fools.ca is where you can find that info. He knows a lot of I work with the company. He's a URL guy. The script is, is clever and honest, and um, it's a comedy, but it's a genuine comedy. And it, uh, it feels like an hour-long conversation that the audience is a part of. Pretzel lemonips? <laughs>